Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Matthias. As we've just seen, he was the one who was chosen to replace Judas, as the scriptures, as the psalmist David had said, let one be taken his place. We also see also about the, the field of blood that was the psalmist we see in the scriptures. So all these aspects of the election of Matthias and the Twelve all convince us again of the, the truth of the Catholic Church. The other day we talked about a, a false church in America, the, the Church of the Twelve Apostles. Ironically, it was by twelve farmers back in the 19th century. That's not the Twelve Apostles that we know of. So this is truly the Church of the Twelve Apostles that we see with Matthias taking over the place of Judas, who betrayed Jesus. And we also can prove the truth of the Catholic Church because all these apostles, when you think about it, they weren't great men. They were just, eight, most of them were plain, simple people, unlettered, as it were, fishermen for the most part. One, Matthew, a, a tax collector, and so on. So they were not the script, they were nobodies. And Jesus took them because he knows he reads the heart of people. And with the coming of the Holy Spirit, they had been fearful during the time of Jesus. When Jesus died, they all ran away except for John, some church that he's founded on a bunch of weaklings, right? Who didn't stand up for Jesus when they crucified him, right? How could a church like that last, except if it was divine, by divine origin, and we see what happened at the at the Pentecost with the coming of the Holy Spirit on all twelve, as Peter talks about, to pick one who would replace Judas, who from the beginning, when they met, first met Jesus at, at his baptism and so on, those early days, unto we see here the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost when they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and bravely went out and spoke to the people. And they all heard them in his own, their own language. And thousands were converted to those days. In those two days, 8,000 people, 5,000 in one day, 3,000 in the next. My friends, that is miraculous. And this is by men who were just fishermen. Why should the Jews go to these people except the miracles that were going around them, and of course, they all heard them in their own language. All right? Another miracle, the gift of tongues. So this is why the church spread so far. And they all proved their worth, but they all died for the Catholic Church. You don't die for something that's not true. All right? You don't die for that. So they all gave their lives, except for John. John was willing to, he was put in oil, but he survived that, he lived to a ripe old age. But they all, other words, they all died. Matthias, it is said that he went to the area in Cappadocia, around the Caspian Sea. We know very little about him, except St. Clement he mentioned something that he said, St. Clement, of Alexandria records in his writings several sayings of our holy apostle. One of these is so very appropriate, quoting Don Prosper Gaudanger, to the sp spirit of the present season, that we consider it a duty to quote it. Quote, this is St. Matthias, it behooves us to combat the flesh and make use of it without pampering it by unlawful gratification. As to the soul, we must develop her power by faith and knowledge. How 
John Prosper Garanger goes, explains, how profound is the, the teaching contained in these few words. Sin has deranged the order which the Creator has estab had established. It gave the outward man such a tendency to grovel in things which degrade him, that only the only means left for us for the restoration of the image and likeness of God unto which we were created is the forcible subjection of the body to the spirit. But the spirit itself, says Don Garanger, that is the soul was also impaired by original sin and her inclinations were made prone to evil. What is to be done, what is to, what is to be her protection? Faith and knowledge. Faith humbles her and then exalts and rewards her. And the reward is knowledge. Here we have a summary of what the church teaches us during these two seasons of Septuagesima and Lent. Let us, says Don Galanger, thank the Holy Apostle on this, his feast, for leaving us such a lesson of spiritual wisdom and fortitude. The same tradition which gives us some slight information regarding the holy life of St. Matthias, tells us that his apostolic labors were rewarded with the palm of martyrdom. Again, the words of St. Matthias, it behooves us to combat the flesh and make use of it without pampering it by unlawful gratification. As to the soul, we must develop her power by faith and knowledge. So we must do penance, as the Lord Jesus says in other words. Unless you do penance, you shall all likewise perish. And of course, all the apostles are blessed. They've all persevered to the end, all gave their lives. All proof, again, of the Catholic Church. This is why I told you yesterday and the day before and the day before that outside the church there is no salvation. It is up to everybody to know which is the right church, the true church, all right? People just say, I belong to this church and I belong to that church. But as I've already alluded to, you can't just belong to a church that was founded by the 12 apostles who were farmers. You gotta go and, and, and see what, the, what this church is all about, find out if it's true. Only the Catholic Church traces its, its lineage back to the apostles. It must, the, the church, the true church, must be one holy, Catholic, and apostolic, back to the time of the apostles. One, one church founded by one person, Jesus Christ. Holy, God is holy, Jesus is holy, he is divine, he founded his church. Catholic, all over the world, Catholic means universal and apostolic. And if people study these facts, then they will realize that the true church is the Catholic church. That's why I told you only those who have invincible ignorance. What is invincible ignorance? It's not their fault, but anybody who, who has been in a church for years and years and years, all right, and the church is, preaches Jesus Christ, should study their church and find out if it's the true church. And if it's not, then they should go to the true church. When you take a look at it, how can some of these churches be true when they don't practice what the gospels teach? Jesus says, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Many of these churches don't believe in the forgiveness of sins, right? And also Jesus, in chapter six, he tells us how important it is to receive Holy Communion. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life into you. Even during Jesus' time, they walked away and say, this is a hard saying, who can accept it? But we must accept it, because that's a prerequisite for being a Catholic. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, God, you shall not have life in you. I am the living bread, Jesus says. He who eats my flesh, eats my flesh. Right? We're not cannibals, of course. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life everlasting, and I will raise him up on the last day. 
What about if you don't eat the flesh and blood of Christ? Will you be raised up on the last day? And people say, well, I don't believe that. Well, I don't think you're going to make it, my friends, because Jesus says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life everlasting, and I'll raise him up on the last day. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I will abide in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Jesus lives in us. So these are very important things to, for people to be aware of. And that's why they have their choice. And that's why they need to pray over this and think about it. And that's why outside the church there is no salvation. Can they save their souls? Where are they going to get rid of their mortal sins? And how about what I told you the other day? Many of these churches allow things that are wrong, that are sinful. They allow contraception, they allow divorce, they may even promote homosexuality and so on and so forth. All right, are they gonna save their souls when you teach those kind of things and the people believe them and practice them? My dear friends, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know the true church. And that's why you, you and me, have to go out and talk to these people and pray for them. Because they do belong in the Catholic Church, especially here in England, as I've already alluded to during these last three days. England was a Catholic country. Catholic, true, a great Catholic country. And then Henry VIII became a heretic. He wanted a divorce. He couldn't get one, so he decided he'd start his own church and everybody had to conform. And if you didn't conform, you would be punished. Many people lost their lives, many lost their jobs, many lost their lands, many suffered, many of our forebears, but many capitulated, went along with it. And that's what they're still doing. And that's why they gotta wake up. And if they start praying the rosary, my friends, you will see a big change. They will get the grace to convert. Believe me, Our Lady promises that you, if you pray the rosary, you'll save your soul. And if you're gonna save your soul, you're gonna to have to be in the Catholic Church, however the Our Lady does it. So my dear friends, go out and evangelize because we can't take a chance that our loved ones will not get to heaven. They may think they're in the right church, but they're not unless they're in the Catholic Church. And outside the church, there is no salvation. Thomas Aquinas said it all when he simply said, in the days of Noah, only those who were in the ark were saved. Now, only those who are in the ark of the Catholic Church will be saved. It's that simple, as I've already explained. So pray and do all you can and read up on it. Do a Google search on outside the church, there is no salvation. Outside the church, there is no salvation. Google it. You get 20 pages or so of teachings of the Catholic Church, of the saints, of the fathers, of the councils, and popes. My dear friends, it's beautiful. So the truth will set you free. Only those who have the truth will be saved and they must try to find the truth. They just can't be say, I, I'm gonna stay in my, my church, I'm gonna be faithful to the church I was born in, but if you're in the wrong church, you shouldn't be there. It makes that simple. So that's why we have to pray, and that's why we have to study and, and seek the truth. And we need to pray the rosary. You start praying the rosary, tell them, and they'll see the truth. So pray the rosary, as Our Lady said at Fatima. Pray and sacrifice, because many souls will go to hell because no one prays and sacrifices for them. Pray and sacrifice for your loved ones, and you'll save their souls as our lady.